Hey, what's up, Cosmetic family? Welcome to the Cosmetic Podcast. Powered by the YMC of Metropolitan Dallas. Cosmetic needs being a personal thing that gives rise to a phenomenon that is dynamic or energizing. We're tackling topics and telling the truth. I'm Roger the Ross. And I'm Keith and So today, I'm uh-huh. excited about today. Okay, what I you am. got? So today our topic is let's shine together. This whole idea of tackling health disparities, right? The whole idea of community health. So let me set the stage. Okay. Can I set the stage? Yes, set the stage. So just so we're all on the same page, community health refers to the non-clinical approaches to improving health and preventing disease and reducing health disparities through addressing things like social issues or social Mm -hmm. norms, Mm -hmm. behavioral, Mm -hmm. environmental, economic, and medical you know, things that help determine um, health in, this is very important, a geographically defined population. So when we're talking about community health, we're not talking about medicine and going to the doctor, although that is a very big part of it. We are talking about other non-clinical approaches that helps entire communities be well because when one shines, we should all shine, shine together. together. Let's okay. shine together. Okay, Rihanna okay, I got you. When we both shine, we shine oh, together. Oh, let Rihanna, let Rihanna do that. Let Rihanna do that, cause she, she, you know, she uh, won a whole lot of wars, but you, you don't, you don't have nothing under your belt. Okay. Like, just stay in the shower or something yeah. to sing where the world can't well, hear you I, sing. I feel supported right now. Yeah, but well, it's okay, fine. okay. Right. Let's so, shine together. Let's shine together. All right. Community. And this is like the sweet spot for the YMCA. It is absolutely the sweet spot. It is the sweet spot. It is that place that we can, because we already build community. Yep. And like people know us for help. The The foundation foundation of of community. community. All right. Let's see. Well, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Community help, right? Right. I mean, the YMCA uh, absolutely has this approach that we can go out. When I think about the Dallas Y and some of the things that we do, mm-hmm. I think about the blood pressure monitoring. Yes. Right? And so it is a lay person who leads the program mm-hmm. uh, and that they bring folks in, get the blood pressure check, and they're educating them on how to monitor that yes. process right there. Non-clinical. And, yes. Yep. There you go. Yep. There you go. And what I, what I love about that that approach is that it takes the stigma out because many times in these geographically defined communities, there are other isms that are present in that uh-huh. community, right? Uh-huh. And those isms, unfortunately, those those lived experiences, unfortunately, um, really kind of weigh in when people are trying to determine whether they trust a particular hospital system or a doctor or a, a prescription or what they're being told about, you know, some medical diagnosis. But in a program like that blood pressure monitoring, where it's literally like your friend from down the street or your aunt or your big mama or the trusted lady in the community, right. that helps people feel a little more comfortable and trust and, and begin to learn and use these things and don't feel like they're, they're possibly being victimized right, right, right by a program. So that's the part that I really love. And, and it's the whole part of education. Yeah. And so you don't have to get a four-year degree in order to take care of yourself. Well... That part, right? Yeah. yeah. You said that sounds like a t-shirt, Keith. Uh, Very rarely do we agree. This is somebody look at what time is. And see, and I know you're going. Uh oh. I'll be printing this right after this podcast right here because you you ain't about to steal my idea right there. You said something right there. And so, if we can get people, if we can get our community to a place that they can begin to know these basic things. Yes. And it's kind of like uh, taking, I don't know a whole lot about a car, but I know if I get my oil changed on a regular basis, yep. I mean, it will run. It's going a- and the cars that I've had, bam, when that oil change is, is done on a regular basis, I keep them, I, mm-hmm. I keep them till the wheels fall off. Uh, you will keep a car till the, you kind of cheap that way. No, no, I'm very cost efficient. That That's way. what we're calling it. And this is the same way that we could play this in community health because- gotcha. Uh, when we talk about, you know, going to the doctor, like that's money, right? Yeah. Uh, and not everybody has the you means know, to be able to do you that. Know, like being sick is very expensive. You got that Preventative right. Preventative stuff is way more cost friendly. Like being, being really sick and, and the, the things that, and you know, on one hand, it's really amazing. And I'm, I'm still fascinated by all of the things medically, like all of the, the stuff that has been revolutionized mm-hmm. that you can treat people and people are living much longer and they're recovering from disease processes that in the past were fatal. However, 
none of that is cheap. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so it, it absolutely is more cost effective to use non-clinical preventative approaches as opposed to just say, hey, if I get sick, I'll just go ahead and go through right. the treatment. Right. I mean, and, you know, the Y offers so many different programs to be able to address that. And not just the Y. I mean, there's uh, your your health department inside. I mean, yeah. so many different resources out there that people can go to and rely on. I know here with the county, uh, we have a great relationship to be able to work with them. And they have so many free resources out yeah. there. I mean, during COVID, you know, they were uh, giving out, you know, of course, everybody was giving out the free shots. Mm -hmm. But the incentive that they were offering is like, hey, here's a gift card. Um, to be able to come can get I stop you here? no, ma'am, you cannot stop me can, here. Can, no, ma'am. The listeners <laughs> no, want to know. No, 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 no. We have a podcast. Can someone to record. please write in and ask the question? How many gift cards did you receive, Keith? Chasing free. So again, <laughs> the county <laughs> health department has so many different <laughs> resources in order to help our community out. They do. Yeah, and they come out. We have them out on a regular basis of to be able to come and just and just share share the resources. You know, the other thing too that I'm noticing is that community health and the information is is ever evolving, right? Yep. And so much of the stuff that I grew up with and what I thought right was the information about eating right or this kind of exercise or doing this as technology evolves and as mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm kind of, um, you know, just gets further and does more. We learn new things. And so you have to almost constantly relearn some of this stuff that you thought you knew before, right? right, right. And it's, I think some folks just figure, oh, okay, well, I learned that you're not supposed to eat this, this, and this when I was younger. But now studies are saying, well, perhaps you should eat a little of that, but don't eat this and add that to this and do this different. And, 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 and I'm going to go 100% because it, sometimes it's habit that you just yes. repeat. Yep. You know, what? why you do that? Well, that's that's what that's what my mama, mama said. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so, so right. when it comes to health information, you might want to, like, verify you that. Because some of the stuff, at least my mama, some of the stuff that we did wasn't out of health necessity. It was out of necessity necessity, right? Right, right, Because right. like, that's the only option. What, what's, that, what's that one called? Cast, cast, casserole? Casserole. Casserole. Mm. Like, it was for no your, one. your ear, mm -hmm. uh, sore throat. Yeah. Uh, if you had a little burn on your arm. I mean, like, well, how, who, how, uh, who, <laughs> you know why? Because medicine was expensive and all we had in the house was castor oil. So whatever was wrong with you. Put a little castor oil on it. Castor oil. Right. <laughs> and I know those matter. who listen, and I know you can identify <laughs> with that. Everybody yeah. has that, but it's so much. Robitussin. Inf Robitussin. <laughs> right. Robitussin don't fix everything. I got a sore throat. Rub a Robitussin. little Vicks on it. I was I was sneezing. Put your little Vicks on it. <laughs> my, my eye was jumping. Get your little Vicks. <laughs> I think we should brush up on it. <laughs> please, please brush up. There's so much great information yes, out there. So and there so are much. credible resources on the internet uh, out there that you can go to. Um, but I remember being involved with uh, a CDC program called REACH. Uh, REACH uh, still goes a grant process, uh -huh. still got it going on. But what it did for a community was it put exercise in a community for free. Oh, nice. It produced farmer's market, you know, at low cost. You can get fresh fruits mm -hmm. um, and, and vegetables there. Mm -hmm. uh, informational sessions, you know, that incentives that they put in the community for you to be able to stay healthy. Yeah. And all these things coming together, they were coming from a lay resource. And so we had these health coaches that they would literally go door to door, knock, 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 yeah. in order to share information uh, with them. Um, and, and, you know, when, you, when I think about that, again, it is that whole process of you, if you don't have the resources to be able to afford to go to the doctor, yeah. here's just some basic things that you can do on your own right. in order to take care of yourself. Right, right, right. That, from moving from this, this mindset of treating illness to maintaining wellness, right? right. Using a much more right. optimistic approach. Right when you are thinking about taking care of your health because data shows that unfortunately for your low income marginalized communities mm -hmm. and your rural communities mm -hmm. access to mm -hmm. quality health care 
is really scarce. Right. And so you absolutely have to go in and help those communities find ways to take care of themselves better so that they lower the chances or the propensity to have to activate these healthcare systems mm -hmm. that unfortunately <laughs> are non-existent right right um many times close to them like it sometimes it's a bit of a burden for them to get to hospitals or dentists or regular just primary care physicians or whatever the case may right, be and so right. helping people maintain wellness so that they don't have to go as much yeah um, and then you know we think about many insurances now also um that pe they're building in those resources as well yeah and so you know you got opportunities to be able to have a wellness coach now yes. uh, while it's it's virtual you know built into the insurance policy that the, the health insurance policy that you have it's a resource there yeah. they got like these 12 week programs that you can go to mm -hmm. and you got this one on one time with the with the coach mm -hmm. you know if you had to go outside and pay for that in in addition to yeah. I mean you already pay a good bit. I don't care what insurance you have, uh, you who you are, forward. you are paying for it. So, it's so understand and learn all the benefits that yeah. you have built built in there. Or just incentivizing folks to do their preventative kinds of care things, like getting this checkup and checking these levels and go get your, you know, your numbers, right? As right. They say, get your numbers right. checked. Things that you know consciously you're supposed to do, but the busyness of life sometimes gets in the way. But when you be like, hold on now. I can get a hundred dollars uh -huh, to uh -huh. go toward these shoes uh -huh, that I want uh -huh. if I just go get what I know I should get anyway. I, I mean, say less. you know, if you have insurance, but if you're listening, you have insurance policy, check into that. Check into that. Because I, I know I always give out three hundred, and I and I tell you what, I I plan me a little I'm something every so year sure for my three hundred dollars. I'm so sure. You probably try to sneak in extra visit. What now? You can't do that. They lock you down on on three hundred. Huh? You tried? No, girl. <laughs> Did you try to find a loophole in the system? No, I did not. <laughs> I feel like you did. I'm saying to everybody who's listening, check in with your health insurance to see Ooh. what are the incentives in there. Because the incentives, Ooh. they they pay you for the additional thing. And they also give you tips on things to do. And you, there's things in there from like uh, sleeping. Mm -hmm. uh, there's in there from walking. Right. People, uh, you know, people underestimate sleep. I know. Right? Like, I know, sometimes, I know, unfortunately, I know. like, we romanticize people who can function off of, oh, I only got four hours of sleep last night. I only got I five know, hours. Oh, you a beast. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. that is a that is a critical restorative process for your body right. that you shouldn't rob yourself right. of regularly. For sure. Like, for sure. you do. You know what? I, I've been trying to do better. Mm, mm, I've been mm. I've been trying. Uh over the last week, uh a whole week. Yeah. Mm. I, I, no, no, no. That I I've been off for the last week and I, you know, there's a difference. You can tell the difference, there's right? Difference. When you don't get enough there's sleep. There's a difference. I know it. It and and it just it exacerbates other underlying issues like right. Once again, it is so fascinating to me how all of this stuff is interrelated. I was talking to um um, one of the seniors in my um, in my facility one day, and they were talking about um, having struggling financially, right? Okay. And that they're trying to make the the little bit of income that they get really stretch, and they wouldn't mind picking up a part time job because it, it keeps them spry, it would get them around people, and they wouldn't mind picking up a part time job, particularly if it was doing something that they really enjoy doing anything like perhaps working with kids or one of them even talked about being a lifeguard because they love getting in the pool. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just, I, thought, I said, that's a great idea. Why, why wouldn't you? Well, you know, my diabetes and my this and my that. And they kind of went through a little bit of a laundry list of some of the conditions that I have mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that keeps them inconsistently um, in a, in a good space physically to right. come to work regularly. Right. And they know that, right that would probably jeopardize their ability to, to get or hold a job. And it was at that very moment that the light bulb went off about this whole interrelatedness between community health and poverty, right? right like we right, always think about right. it that people are, their health suffers because they're poor. But I think there's a little bit of a converse relationship going on that people are less resourced because their health is bad. They can't regularly work and participate in activities that are going to get them you know, resources. And so, and, wow. And then when you add on to that is that if you can't even do that, get that enough energy level to get to work, right? right? 
then you think about the other social impacts that it has. So you think about voting. So mm. now voting comes up and I need to get there. Like, are you going to really put thought into right. into doing that right, right. there? Can um, you get there? You right. don't know how you're going to feel on voting right. day. Wow. And then that leads to, you know, heaven forbid you're, you're not doing any leisure stuff at that point. Right. You know, let me just walk around the block just so, you, you know. You don't really know your neighbor. Right. You just, wow. And then it just it just continues to put you in a box when you are not yeah. taking care of yourself. These feelings of isolation, right? Yeah. Just all from medical conditions that, conditions that in some instances... If, if not totally prevented, can absolutely be lessened mm -hmm. to some degree, it, particularly if you put the, that, that education and that knowledge and that awareness in, in communities so yeah. folks can kind of grasp that. And it's like that. the YMCA has to be able to be in that space. Absolutely. We, like we got to increase know, we that. We always talk about we're trying to fight this whole gym and swim persona we have. Perhaps, right? Maybe we lean into the quote unquote gym side and really help people understand, right? right this, this health and wellness thing, not from a come in and jump on this treadmill. You going to figure out how to work out anyway consummate right mm -hmm. exercise that we unfortunately sometimes kind of cater to but really going out and helping people find these fun ways to exercise maintain health mm -hmm. look for mm -hmm. total wellness like really enhance their lives by allowing them to find total health whether that's mental or physical or spiritual or whatever the case may be we are absolutely well positioned to do that i think sometimes we're our own <laughs> yeah, we, we get, get in we our get own, own way, way. Right? and then i mean it just helps you to help develop your community even better yeah. you know i think about uh, a project here in dallas uh with the redbird mall mm -hmm. and when peter brock broski and, and his team were going out to develop that mall it's like what is this concept where we can come up with, other than just opening up retail stores to for people to come in and shop it's like how do we bring um health and uh, medicine to this space right here yeah. to be able to help this more under-resourced side of town. If anybody know anything about Dallas, there's a dividing line. Yes. And, and it's very and it's clear. Very clear. Yeah. <laughs> and so with this mall concept, uh, Peter went out and recruited uh, two medical um, healthcare organizations to be able to come that in that, were come considered that space. rival, right? Because right. there's competition in the healthcare industry too. Right. Yeah. And so you got these two um, organizations that are on site right there. Mm -hmm. Now, where they didn't have a huge presence, they put their stake in the ground and say, you know what? We want to make sure this community is better. So how revolutionary was that? Because typically the model is, right? You're going to go in and you're going to rehab a mall because that's what Redbird was. It was a mall. It was Correct. retail. It was restaurants. I would think your first inclination as a business person will be, number one, to go and try and rehab a mall in an area that has the the um, demographic that has this expendable income that right. will make this mall thrive, right. which is not necessarily the case around Redbird. That right. demographic has shifted over the years. And Correct. The, the finances aren't there like they are in other communities where malls exist. Correct. But, the, but to think about a mall and what it does in a community from a much broader perspective than just retail by asking these hospital systems to come in, I think he changed the game. I think so. I think so. there I think are probably so. going to be malls or developers around the country who are going to begin to adapt this model. And before, when they looked into certain communities and areas and they just kind of said, eh, that's not going to be a good investment. We're not going to get a good ROI. There's not enough wealth or expendable income in the community for us to put a mall. Mm -hmm. They're going to rethink that based on this model and bring those types of folks together. And I got to think from his perspective is that when we talk about the health of having a healthy community, right. it, it's more than just the dollar. If it, people it, get healthy, they can work. And they they gonna make money, and they gonna come in. They gonna come and raid the red bird mall. Come on now, he is a genius. Come on now, come on. He's a genius. Come on, come I, on. That just occurred to me when I feel good. I got a little change in my pocket. Yeah. You know what? I had to go up here and see my doctor. He right. gave me good news. Yeah. My numbers is down. I yeah. feel good. I'm going over here. Hey, look, 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 I'm gonna see Doc. I'm, right I'm, I'm gonna see Doc. And then I'm gonna come in here and walk me a lap around, around, uh, around the mall. I'm, walking, I'm gonna look to one the shop. But well, here we go. There we, you go. Come on now, let's put it all together. You gotta be that able to create genius. unique ways in order to improve the health of our community. Yes. They tell you you gotta get out and walk. The mall counts. I know. Cause I done plenty of times got my steps. <laughs> well, and that's a whole if nother you topic. Buy enough right? stuff, that's strength training too, because the bags is heavy. Bam. Take okay. that, take that. Okay, you, 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 you took all, 
Yeah. You took a whole other turn. strength training. <laughs> I'm getting a little strength training in that too. But that, I love that concept of marrying. That is, that is where the, that's Peter, good stuff. We, we got to get Peter up here to talk about that. That is, that that is, is good that's stuff. Good that stuff. is good stuff. Yeah. You know, so yeah. community health is very important. Um, yeah. And we talk a lot about the education part. I mean, there's a, there are plenty, plenty of different programs uh, that are out there for us to do. Um, we, you know, I think about get up and go program mm -hmm. whereby, <clears throat> you know, we're educating families um, and the concept of, you know, it is the family. It is truly yeah. mom uh, and the kids, mom, dad, and the kids that yep. are coming in here and they're learning Emma, together. Aunties, cousins, right. yeah. And it, you know, you got, you know, we talked about the one-on-one -on -one thing, you know, so yes, you individual can go see your doctor and get better, but man, what if we are educating everybody together? Yeah. You know, the other <laughs> thing too that I'm, lo I'm loving about this community wellness thing is that it is creating this whole other genre of, um, professional development for folks. I, some of the best instructors, whether it's in this community health space or oh, even yeah. sometimes in oh, group yeah. X space, oh, that yeah. I've come across are people who were actual participants, people who lost 100 pounds, people who changed the way they eat, people who were once on some kind of medication and now because of you know their attention to wellness and changing their activities and their habits, they're off medication. They could tell that story and they become they become your next level community health director or your right. wellness director right. because they know of what they speak. They take it out of this theoretical right. and they put it in really practical real world, which really is, in my opinion, as a person who, who I think flirts on that line and needs this education, they they put it in real world terms for folks. They, they take it out of this, well, do this and do that and eat bok choy and edamame. I, bok choy and edamame. <laughs> First of all, I can't even uh, pronounce that. And number two, how much does that cost? I right, don't have right, money for that. Right. I don't know how it tastes. I'm not eating that. What can I do with lettuce? Right, right, <laughs> right? Right, right, And they can help you find practical ways because they too have been through this. Yeah. Well, when you when you create wellness coaches, health coaches um, mm -hmm. from the lay person perspective, yep. now that is when that person is at the family reunion, right? Yep. They're spreading that word. You know, it's yeah. just a little extra that is in there. Hey, y'all, let's. I know we want some ham hocks and our green beans, but let's. Think about Let's it this have a way, fruit also. Salad too, right? Yes. And so, yes. I mean, and, and it, you know, just kind of branching that, branching mm -hmm. that word that's out there, and, and it's and doing it in a different way. Yeah. I mean, when you think, you know, non, so many nonprofits are in this space right now, and so how do we just help continue to educate? You know, whether that's Big Mama, mm -hmm. whether that is creating a, a specific program, we're going after grants that we can, you know, have people fund it, mm -hmm. these lay people fund it to be able to, you know, to do this good work right there. So, I mean, there's lots and lots is there's out there. so much opportunity. And the upside is that the more committed and the more we try in this space, the collateral not damage is that communities get healthier. Right? Like, even if we, we didn't get something all the way right, the effort in and of itself is going to help communities um, be better yeah. about wellness. Now, one of the concepts that we're, we're in the process of planning right now, and we do it in some, some micro ways, ways is that uh, we're going to do this mobile uh, health fair. And so what we want to do, that's a mobile health clinic, probably probably a better word, mm -hmm. is that all the organizations that we already work with and others that we haven't started working with yet who have vehicles. So think about oh. the big bus that maybe do the mammogram that yeah. we have, you know, we have this coming up already to our, to our parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, those who do um, uh, blood pressures, those who take blood, I mean, those who do dental, mm -hmm. I mean, those who do vision, a lot of different organizations have these vehicles. And our idea was to partner with Red Bear Mall and <clears throat> collaborate to bring about 30 or 40 of these vehicles up in the parking lot. One to showcase, one that's a kind of a one-stop shop for that day for people to come and get medical care. Love it. Um, but the backside of that is that once you're there, we're passing out information also to mm -hmm. say, hey, here are where these vehicles are going to be at throughout the Metroplex in the upcoming months. And if you need ongoing care, and if this is what you can afford for right now, here's an option also to be able to, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. and then also at the same time to draw them in to um, showcase other doctors who they, they can go to and other programs as well. But from the mobile perspective is that, you know, if you're way out this way, Hey, this vehicle may be out there for you to get, get service. Um, so that's a concept that we're in the process of planning um, right now. We're going to do that in the, in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, but already, 
there's an organization that we're partnering with that they drive up. And when I left the branch today, uh, we had a medical organization in the parking lot and the appointments were filled yeah. that people can, you know, come and get that particular service. I mean, hey, if we can bring it together with food trucks, why get right? Like, that's yeah. the whole thing now. You you just find a spot, bring in all these different food trucks and yeah. sit. The people will come. Right. right? And they're going right. to go from truck to truck to truck right. eating. Why shouldn't we do that? With I mean, so somebody can, uh, the goal is that somebody can come in and just get this whole, yeah. you know, array of service from, from the vision to the dental, yeah. from the hearing uh, to the mammogram, yeah. you know, we'll have a uh, HIV uh, testing that's going get, on there. Get this lightweight <laughs> thing checked out. I had this bump on my arm for right. a while. Get, get that checked out while you're here. Yeah. I love that. That's so, a great contact. We trying. We trying. We're going to get the word out there. Is that we, your idea? Huh? Was that your idea? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just want to I just want us to live in a better a, a better uh have a better quality of life I, and I, live in a community that people are are healthy and they know what they can you know how they can maintain it also I understand. I, I agree I, I am actively in the process of unbigging at this very moment I know how to get big it's the unbigging Unbigging. I gotta unbig. All right, we're gonna have to talk about being uh, how to become unbig. Well, as soon as I do it, I'm gonna let you know. Well, you know, if I I, I, I got I, some I, Oreos at the house. Oh no, don't go there, sister. Don't go there. Be good. Be good. We're gonna do this. We do this can't thing be together. Wasteful, <clears throat> you can't be wasteful. You, you're correct. And and so it's called it's called moderation. No, because after you open the pack, you got to hurry up and eat them. They get stale, and they were a gift. How would that person feel if I didn't eat those cookies? I don't want their feelings to be hurt. Well, I tell you what. Um, let's get your blood pressure checked. We're going to check your numbers. After and, I and, eat my cookies? No, 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 no. Before. Oh. So we can determine whether or not you should be eating those cookies. And well, and I think I, don't need I, no I think to tell me that. I think that your health is just a little bit better, more. Than the, than some uh, and my desire to unbig than some saturated should, fat should should trump my desire to eat the Oreos. You would think that it would, right? Okay. <laughs> Those cookies well, that's where the education it. comes in at, <laughs> and that we want to educate folks. We're going to edu- educate ourselves. Yeah, to become better in this space. So I mean, because we got to get to the place that that desire is not there. There's nothing wrong with eating the Oreo. There's nothing wrong with the Oreo. Okay, but when we when we when we pile it on, well, that's what, the okay. Well, what is pile? Well, what, let's what, let's what let's. I tell you what. Piling? Well, what how, how about this? How about this? Why don't we go to the place of a good starting point as okay. far as like where are you with your health? So, My like health to say, is fine, I think. Well, I'm almost well, sure. there there's some different indicators okay. out there that All may right. say that your health is at a different place, and we got to really pay attention with that. And, and I'm not the doctor to be able to say that. Right. But um, based on. Well, wait a minute. I, I feel I feel judged right now because I know you, you no, can no, do no, some damage no. with ice cream. You can do damage with all no, that no, stuff. No, I didn't but, say we. I said you. <laughs> oh no, that was that was it. That was in my past. Uh, I I couldn't tell you the that last was time. In your past? I couldn't tell you the last time I bought a gallon of ice cream. So you just bought a little pint now? Uh, no, I couldn't. I can't tell you the last time I bought it. a pint, a gallon. Mm-hmm. I have. A, I I had a little yogurt last week, and I was gonna tell you the time before. That. I mean, but Look at you. but it's paying attention to some little things. You know, am I where I want to be? No, there's a place that I want to be, sure. but I am working towards that You're because there's a level too? Yeah, I'm trying to unbig, okay. but to a place that I have a level of understanding what I need to do mm-hmm. and I'm working towards that. Now, what we need to do from my organizational standpoint yeah. is that like, how do we get out there and share that message with folks? Hey, and, and the message is the real message. That's what we're talking about this whole time of the lay people mm-hmm. being involved in that. Hey, this is who I am. And, and you know, Healthy isn't defined by, you know, wearing a size zero and all that. There's mm-hmm. different ways that you define define healthy. Sure. And we're taking real people with a real message out there to say, hey, this is where I was. This is where I am now. And this is how I think about when I look at a cookie, when I look at ham hock, whatever the, you know, whatever this the is design. This the second time you talked about ham hocks. You want it? I First of all, who's still eating ham hocks, Keith? Huh? <laughs> if you could see his face. That means him. Yeah, he I, is he is people. When that meat is marinated, <laughs> I got him. That's how I feel about him. 
I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. But, but again, the education on our side. It's true. It's I mean, true. Community, community, yeah, it's community true. health is, is very real. It is very real. And it doesn't mean that you got to go see a doctor every time to, to get well. You individual can take care of yourself. We have the ability to be able to help educate people to carry that message to the community. And, I, you know, I, 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 I mean, I think it's just the thing that the why the nonprofits that are out there who are about community, like the health message is what we should do. Because when we take a look at some of the you know things that are going on in our society, in our world, I mean, they come from this place of under-resourced areas. And a lot of times people are just trying to eat. They're just trying to eat. And, they're not, and, they're and eating for quantity, family. not yeah. quality. And so that's all they have. If, we improve, they... if we improve the health of our communities in, in, in such a way, then... Things change. Sure. I mean, that's from that's from crime. That's education. from education. Yep. Uh, Health care uh, rates go down. Generation of wealth. You know, all yep. of that. All of that change. Yep. If we can put this thing in and here we that we call community. 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 There we go. I love it, and I'm I'm gonna finish this pack of Oreos, but I'm not gonna buy that next pack. Okay. 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 But if somebody buy me a pack, I mean, it must be it, it's in the stars. It's fate. That, that I eat well, sister girl, uh, I'm not. I'm. I, I'm not gonna wish that on you. I'm, yeah. I know that you. I know that you're better on that. Um. Well, you know, I guess I'm trying to be better. So. Hey, look, before we sign off, I uh, want to give props to our producer, Lachey Leonard. Thanks, Lachey, Lachey, Lachey for, what you do, for what you do to make us uh, make us better here. Yeah, and thank you for listening to the Cosmetic Podcast. On this episode called Let's Shine Together. Tackling health disparities. Subscribe and listen to us weekly. Hey, and don't be shy. Give us a five star review. And as always, be dynamic, be phenomenal, and be cosmetic. cosmetic.